Hey everybody, this is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast, our online TV and radio network. I'm coming to you from frozen British Columbia and I'm going to be talking to Richie Ogonik. He is in Florida, of all things. And um, Richie comes to me with a wonderful story and we'll get into that. Uh, I would say Richie's probably one of the heroes that you don't know about, but should know about. But of course, the mainstream, as we know it, the mainstream medical industry, don't want to know that there are people like Richie. Richie Ogonik, say hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay. So Richie comes to us with a website called Taper Aid. That's T-A-P-E-R-A-I-D dot com. And on it is a product that everybody who has anything to do with the opioid epidemic needs to know about. Richie, how would you how would you describe what you've got? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, Taperade um, is a combination of 17 different Chinese and Western herbs, highly concentrated highly concentrated in their potency. Um, and it took me a year and two months and seven or eight trials and errors and sharing uh, different remedies with addicts to begin to realize that I had something efficacious, something that was actually working. Um, it was about a year and a half ago in March of 2000. 16, I guess it was, or 15, that I received a call from a heroin runner located in New Orleans who told me that he came down, he tapered from $250 worth of heroin to $30 worth of heroin by taking 10 grams of powder. I wasn't calling it anything back then, um, over a period of nine days. And he found it so transforming that he was going to share it with 19 of his clients. Now, he wasn't a heroin dealer. He was a heroin runner. And a runner is a person that supports huge habits but doesn't make any money. So basically, they're in the same boat as, as the people that they serve. Mm -hmm. um, a okay, few so, days, yeah. so let, me, let me just try and get it straight in my head or for people to understand. So what we have here is an herbal mix that you have successfully deployed into the field out there that has a profound effect on the physiology. It changes how the opioid behaves in the human body, right? Or how the it, body reacts to it. It Well, it, it seems to be a serotonin uptake, it balances, the dopamine, if you take a look, if you Google search all the different herbs located in the composition, you'll beget, begin to get an understanding as to how the synergetic effect actually works. But that seems to be the case because irrespective of where a person's at uh, in their process, organically, very naturally, after some days, people begin to notice that their opiate of choice is much, much stronger. In fact, some people feel that they're getting high for the first time in years, which lends to a whole other dynamic. Yeah let's, talk about can... that, uh, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit later, how the physiology works. So just to introduce it at the beginning here. So the reason a person would want to take this is to either A, get off of the opioids because... Uh, they have become so ineffective that they're having to take a very high dose. Right. So the taper in the taper aid means that I will be able to take a whole lot less of the right. opioid to get the effect that I was getting. I guess exactly. that's, that's almost like getting to the first high, right? Exactly. It's basically bringing one back to when they were first introduced to their opiate of choice. And a lot of people that do tape rave don't even consider jumping off completely because they haven't even been, been able to taper. But once they begin to taper and they see that they're actually in control 
of their relationship with their drug of choice for the first time in a long time, they begin to entertain the possibility of jumping off completely once they've gotten off down to a certain amount where it becomes more manageable for them to jump off. And although it's still not a walk in the park to spend those four or five days at home, the taper aid complete, which is the second remedy with some other supplements that I include uh, in terms of information for people to go and buy in conjunction with the taper aid helps them jump off completely. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people come into this not thinking that they can taper and they come out of it having jumped off completely. So, so okay, so we can take it to the natural conclusion that you can actually be completely off the drug provided you don't have the reason to take it. Exactly. Well, that's, that's the key, providing that you really want to jump off, that you just don't want to want to. So the very interesting thing about these, herb, these herbs and these compositions, which to me are the quintessential harm reduction tools, is that a person sometimes for the first time in years doesn't have a methadone clinic or looking over their shoulder or a suboxone doctor looking over their shoulder and they actually have control and they have to re-evaluate their relationship with their drug of choice. And so some people end up realizing that, oh my God, I'm getting high for the first time in a, in a few years. I just want to like get high for a while. And I personally have absolutely no judgment. My goal, I don't have a goal here. I just want to share this product and give people the, the freedom and the choice to go as far as they want with it. I don't even like the word, the words go as far because that also implies that there's a better goal. But I just want to share this with people so that they can basically explore what they need to uh, right. when taking it. Okay, so let's just get specific. So it works with all opioids? For a while, I was under the impression that it was only going to work with short-acting opioids. And I've shared it with about 160 people doing Oxycontin, hydrocodone. I have a 24-year experience working with addicts. So the range of pain management medications, along with heroin, morphine, um, Oxycontin, and so on, Percocets, uh, at initially, I thought that those were going to be um, the ones, the opiates that were affected by Taper aid. But then I began to share Taper aid with the long life opiates like methadone and Suboxone and Subutex. And I was very surprised to find out that it was helping people, nourishing people in such a way that it was decreasing anxiety, um, it was promoting sleep, it was promoting good appetite, it was helping people deal with those uh, uh, long acting synthetic opiates as well. Okay, so imagine I have somebody who's been on methadone now for five years, they want to live a clean life, but they're simply hooked on it, they can't really go without it. And uh, the only reason they take it is because they were previously hooked, right? Yeah, yeah, let's, so, yeah. So exactly. now we get the taper aid. Yeah. What's your typical course of how the interaction? What's it look like? Yeah, well, it's bottles. very simple. I mean, people, yeah, people, I often suggest that people try a bottle first because I could always overnight or two day air a second bottle. So the, the, it's not necessary to order two or three or four at a time. Some okay. people want to because they just feel more secure. Okay. But especially after they've seen that it works, they often order more. Okay. And, and it, they take 10 grams a day. They take two grams in the morning, either just in the mouth or in the coffee or tea or juice or milk or water. Um, and then five hours later, another two. Five hours later, another two grams. And, and each little plastic spoon in the containers that I send are one gram spoons. And yes. then at bedtime, people take four. Uh, so they take a total of 10 grams a day uh, for a, uh, it's a 10 day, it's a 15 day process. So it's a 15 day supply of taper okay. Um And quite often it takes between two and six days for people to begin to start feeling the effects. Some people are very 
set on tapering and they only have that in mind. Other people just take it organically and basically just wait until their bodies are ready. For example, they'll wake up in the morning and they'll take a shower and they'll be heading off to work. And four hours later, they'll realize for the first time in two years, they haven't taken their opiate of choice in the morning because they weren't feeling sick. And that could happen a few days or nine days after they start to taper it. And then they realize, wow, you know, and some people like find extra money in their pocket and they realize that their heroin is taking them three times longer to use because they're using only one third of what they were using mm -hmm. before. So it's, it's very different for different people. It's a range of okay. effect. So, all right, so we, we've uh, got one bottle. You're at the end of the first bottle by about two weeks. And then what? Well, it depends on the individual. It depends on so many uh, uh, circumstances, whether their lives are uh, stable physically, how they are emotionally, um, as to whether they can taper in nine days to one half to one eighth the amount that they were doing before or whether it's going to take four weeks or a couple of months. Some people want to go slow. You know, they're, they're working hard jobs. They don't want right. to detox at all. Some okay. people go fast. All right. So they're now, they're now on the second, third, or fourth bottle of Taperade. So, yeah. so now, now second, they're third. So now yeah. they're, and, do and they then, just stop? They're done? Yeah. Well, it depends on what their intention is. Um, right, but some of them are done if they're doing 20 or $30 worth of, if they're not scrambling around juggling three doctors and they're getting their scripts from one doctor now and the tolerance is so low that they're experiencing comfort okay. and pain management. So right. then they may, they may stop at that point I or see. they may go all the way down until they want to jump off, in which case I suggest that they get a bottle of the Taperade complete, and that's a four to five day process where they have to spend those days at home taking 20 to 24 grams of Taperade complete a day, along with a few supplements like niacin and magnesium citrate. Um, and basically with a package, including the Taperade, people's withdrawal symptoms are ameliorated by 60 to 75%. And then they can just kick back and not feel good for a few days, but they can watch movies. They're not like climbing the walls at all. Right. And so at the end of that, with the taper aid complete, they are essentially clean? They're essentially clean. And then a whole other level, in my opinion, of the work begins. Because after spending 24 years with speaking with addicts and mostly their wives and daughters and sisters, um, I noticed after about 10 or 12 years of speaking with people every single day on the phone that there's very specific dynamics, dynamics that, are, that actually create the baggage that brings a person to the addictive situation in the first place. And yes. about two thirds of the people that call me have an abandonment issue, some kind of an emotional and or physical break with the same sex parent. So to me, 50% of the equation is being clean, is placing yourself into a pre-addictive state. And then there's a whole other situation yes. that begins. And particularly for a person in their 20s and 30s, if they don't have a life yet to speak of, if they don't have a support system, if they don't have a couple of kids that they have to you know, get through college and a job that they like and a mortgage, yes. um, they they absolutely need to do the therapy that's necessary for them to to access those feelings of abandonment with a usually a same sex parent same sex therapist that they really admire and respect yes um and so to me that's just as important as placing yourself into a pre-addictive state all right. I have found uh, that when people work with an emotional healing therapy, I have been recommending EFT, emotional freedom technique, tapping, 
that tends to lift a lot of these uh, buried emotions. You can mm -hmm. you can release these stored negative patterns. They they are stored in the body. They're out mm -hmm. of the reach of the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. They are buried in the subconscious mind. Uh, anyway, EFT is one of them. Body talk, emotion code. Right. I, I've worked with neuro linguistic programming, rapid pain elimination, multiple systems that. Right can accelerate this this process of going from addictive to released. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and yeah. interestingly, we also have a product in our website that <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think of telling you about. It's called The Gift. And it's developed by Farrell Brenner, who's been an addictions counselor for years, like 40 years. And uh, at the end of his uh, time there, he decided to say, to create a vibrational product. It comes in a bottle, there are drops, and you put the drops either in your mouth or on your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And the drops, he says, contains the vibration of having arrived at the point of being okay. Mm -hmm. As in- is it, is it like a homeopathic or- is It behaves it... that way, it's a vibrational. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, you take the drops and for the next four hours, you now have in your body the vibration of a person who is who has their act together, who is not injured emotionally. Yeah, I go ahead. Yeah. And anyway, so all of a sudden you have better choices. You have the yeah, ability. Yeah, I, would, to make I would imagine so. Stuff. Yeah, I I I'm thinking about um, the, the twelve step program, and I noticed that through the years, inadvertently, occasionally, not very often, um, people find a sponsor that they really admire and respect. Because you see, in terms of addicts, the first time that they sat across from someone that they really looked up to and admired, they were abandoned, they were ripped off. Yes. So addicts, first of all, tend to be, in my opinion, more intelligent and more sensitive than the average therapist. So it's very easy for them to manipulate the relationship. Yes. Um, and it's also, they're very reticent to sit across from someone, anyone in their life that they really admire and respect because of that initial uh, experience of being abandoned. So the key is for them to be open to sitting across from someone that they don't have control over. And that's during that relationship, that's when, that's when the healing happens in the context of, of that relationship. And therapy, when some people ask, tell me, oh, I, I ask them, well, are you doing therapy? And they say, I love my therapist. I'm seeing him or her for six and a half years. Then I basically understand that they're not doing therapy. Uh, yeah. Because really meaningful therapy does not have to take a long time. It, it really has to do with the relationship. Yes. Yeah, they're buying themselves a, a figure. Yeah. Both a, of them. A friend. <laughs> Oh, yeah, perhaps both, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's codependent in that sense, yes. Okay, so that's wonderful. Um, and and about the pain, right? Many times yeah. people take the opioid, opioids to deal with physical pain that's been... That's right, that's right. They, didn't, they don't have an abandonment issue at right. all. But they just, just, right. I was just thinking of the pain. I mean, I, I understand pain from injury, that heals. But there could be a pain from a chronic, probably autoimmune inflammatory illness of sorts. Like yeah. There's the fibromyalgia or yeah. the rheumatoid arthritis or whatever names of things. Yeah. Or for chronic physical pain. Yes. You know, and, and with that, I have seen a lot of relief with CBD, with cannabidiol mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. Me too. I've heard about it. Sure, a lot. And anyway, we do offer it on our other website, on our website called Remarkable Recovery. Just in the last few days, there's a couple of people that have been sharing with me that they would like to to get marketed. They would like to get taper right out there in conjunction with the oil. That's exactly what I'm thinking we're going to be doing is where we can offer okay. it on the Remarkable Recovery website for people who need to actually use the combination. They can get off the uh, 
OxyContin, but if the pain is still there, we need to resolve the pain. Yeah. Absolutely. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you keep mentioning 24 years of experience with uh, addictions. I, I think it would be nice to tell people just some of your background, just so they understand just how deep the knowledge is that led you to actually oh, create yeah. that it's not just some guy who threw together a few herbs without okay. much concern, right? All right. Well, yeah, um, it was 24 years ago um, that I came back from Cameroon with the first uh, 13 grams of Ibogaine hydrochloride. And uh, previous to that, this granddaddy of psychoactives was only available with one other person in Amsterdam um, conducting uh, addiction interruption treatments with this very powerful psychoactive, um, often for fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars a treatment. And when I heard about Ibogaine in 1989, it took me a few years to get to Cameroon. And there was a series of synchronistic events that transpired that winded up where I literally in 10 days was bringing the first 13 grams of the extract, extracted Ibogaine from the West African shrub back to the West. And I immediately published an article and began to do psychospiritual and therapeutic and addiction interruption treatments with Ibogaine underground um, over a period of, of 15 and a half years. Um, uh, Richie, this 13 grams, uh, what did that treat? One person, two? It, treat, it treated about, oh, I would say maybe eight or nine people, 10 people. Okay. Um, and I had to fly back to Cameroon a half a dozen times over the first two year period um, and meet my chemist at his bank. And uh, in fact, uh, I owed him $9,000 from the first 13 grams because I only had $4,000 in my pocket and he was charging me $1,000 a gram. Mm -hmm. and, and then as the years went on, I found a, a family a laboratory located in Italy that uh, made it available to me for much, 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 much less. So I was able to, instead of charging $3 and 21 cents a milligram, I was able to uh, charge much, much less. And people came from all over the world, from Australia, to do a psycho-spiritual session with me underground in Florida. Um, it, was, it was outrageous. What would that uh, look like? Could you describe what happens in one of those treatments? Uh, sure. Uh, well, uh, the, right, so I, let me let me ask one more question before that. So, a person who would want to do this must have heard that ibogaine is the gateway to release a person from the from the hold of the opioid, right? Uh, yes. I, guess, um, I mean, you can yes. do it better than I, I suppose. Well, I don't even know anymore if I can do it if I can do it better, but. Um, most of the people that came to me initially came for psychospiritual intentions. Um, they wanted to experience the psychoactive that um, was literally a 36 hour experience, which included the addition of a metabolite that uh, filled up certain receptor sites in the biochemistry, the opiate, the nicotine, and the alcohol receptor sites, and didn't actually wash out of the receptor sites for several months. So when people do Ibogaine with specific intentions, things they want to work through, things they want to explore, very often I would receive a call eight or 10 months later and people would say, I'm just completing the last of my intentions in terms of, of my exploration and I may consider doing it again six months down the road. So this is a psychoactive that people end up doing at the most three or four times in a lifetime. It's something that you just don't do once a week, like ayahuasca, once a month, like other psychoactives. It's, it's truly the granddaddy of psychoactives. Um, and um, 
And so it's, it's a very powerful, overwhelming, very daunting, psychoactive, very deeply self-reflective experience to 36 hour experience where you basically have your eyes closed for 35 hours, but you're not asleep. You're in a waking dream and there's these pictorial gestalts and these archetypal vignettes that emerge and they basically, it's kind of like our egos, our sense of self is constructed of a thousand rubber bands and a ball. And what the Ibogaine does, it relaxes all the, the bands and you get to see all of the interconnecting threads in relationship to how we have created a false definition of who we are. And people come out of it like very, very humbled, um, sometimes very confused, but in a very positive kind of way. Therapists have told me that basically 60, 70% of their thinking process from hour to hour has been eliminated because it quiets the mind so profoundly that they're able to be with their clients much more deeply, much more fully. Um, mm -hmm. So it, for a long time, I was doing psychospiritual and we would surround ourselves with, with therapists and do direct therapy with people under the influence of lower doses of, of Ibogaine. And we created the, the, the protocols to work with people therapeutically and psychospiritually. And then, uh, I don't know if you remember the, the young actor by the name of River Phoenix, um, yes. who died uh, in 19, I think it was 93, in front of, a, uh, in front of an L.A. club. Well, 13 days later, a dear friend of his came to me uh, who was addicted to heroin. Um, River and his family were all... Uh, living in Gainesville, Florida, where I was living and where I am now. Yeah. And so, and so he did a session with me, and that enabled me to to focus more primarily um, on working with Ibogaine, and I was able to let go of uh, making a living selling my jewelry, which I did for 21 years. So the story is that um, you deeply understand. <laughs> the relationship of the ego, the mind, the subconscious, the, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard to, I, I hear your words and I'm thinking, uh, okay, beautifully put, everybody who is addicted has issues that are complex and they all have, you, you said the rubber bands, right? There are these things that bind. Mm -hmm. I, I usually relate to it in cobwebs kind of. Yeah. Big, pictorials where things are bound up and need to be released, unwound, so that the lives can be rebuilt, put back together. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, basically the, the, the cool thing about the potential that Ibogaine affords a person is that they're placed into a pre-addictive state. And if they do it for psychospiritual intentions, not for addiction interruption, some people have come with the intention of working through food disorder, um, codependency, um, you know, all kinds of different uh, behavioral challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and some people just want to connect deeper to their own godhood. Right. Um, just, um, yeah. Just yeah, find so, themselves there. Yeah, yeah. And what happens is they, there's a level of disappearing that happens. There's a level of that there is no self that, that happens. And so they need to integrate that into, into their daily functioning. Um, there's a lot of freedom that comes with that, but also sometimes it's very challenging to remain open and unstructured and confused. It's very threatening not to know, not to have a definition of who we think we are. Yes. So that's, that's the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's the challenge post post any kind of transformational experience, not only yeah. I began, but interestingly, yeah. interestingly, I've reached these states through yogic breathing, through yeah, me too. practices. And uh, it's it's threatening to be losing self. 
right? Yeah. Like, it's as yeah, if it's, a doll, it's, it's as if a hole were opening, and what? I'm just the the unknowable. Yeah, the you know, I'm absolutely the unknowable. Yeah, the insignificance <laughs> of my yeah. own existence and all that. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so <laughs> that's probably not what we're going to end up doing with most of our clientele. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I was thinking about <clears throat> during the Ibogaine days. Yeah, no, the Ibogaine. No, no, you're right. Yeah. But no, this is this is very different than Ibogaine. This is yeah. not a psychoactive. Yeah. It's uh, it's not as sexy as Ibogaine for sure. Yeah. But we can reach a lot more people. We've reached maybe 18,000 people in 25 years with Ibogaine. And my intention when I went to Africa was basically to go to the rainforest and to, to see if these pygmies were going to be choose me as the harborer of Ibogaine to the world. And I was going to buy 40,000 doses, three cents each, go to Needle Park, dose out 20 or 30,000 people, call CNN. And uh, oh, one quarter, oh. one quarter of the people would show up for their free needles. Needles. I mean, this is my messianic fantasy that yes. you know it would all be done in three weeks. Yes. Because very few people would show up for their free needles, and and that would be the end of my messianic complex. Yes. So I didn't know it was going to cost me a thousand dollars a gram. First yes. of all. Yes. But I was happy to receive them, and happy to be kind of following a project that seemed to have an energy of its own. Mm. It was very beautiful. I came back and spent probably 10, 12 hours a day for three months on the phone. At that time in 1993, it cost me about $1,000 a month for my phone bill. And I was absolutely, every moment, I was completely delighted to be sharing this with as many people uh -huh. as soon as possible. And that brought me to being very reticent to admit to myself a few years later that I began was not going to be the home remedy that I can reach a million people with. Yes. Because it's much too daunting. It's yeah. a felony to possess. It's thousands of dollars. It yeah. takes a lot of professional care and so on. So I began to open up a little bit to finding a remedy. And when I went to Vietnam, and was introduced to a combination of herbs there. And, and the reason why these special herbs that ameliorate symptoms of withdrawal and help people taper are located in places like Vietnam and China is because for a thousand years, they've been growing opium in those places. And the families that have been growing opium for generations and generations are all without any judgment value here. They're all addicted to opium. And so what happens is in the structure of these families, the elderly people are enabled to maintain their opium use through the seasons where the opium is not available and there's a shortage. So the younger people have to wade through the symptoms of withdrawal every season. And as a result of that for a thousand years, medicine men and women have been going into the rainforest and have been finding active ingredients that ameliorates the symptoms of withdrawal. So I went to Vietnam, it was uh, one of the prime places on the planet to find a combination of herbs that help with this process. And so when I brought this combination of herbs back and began to include some Western herbs, um, we came up with uh, Taperade and Taperade Complete. Great. <laughs> so, uh, so here we have, right? It's, it's not cheap, but it's not really expensive in comparison to what it accomplishes. Right, right. When somebody yeah. wakes up in the morning and they have a $200 a day habit and they don't know where they're going to get their $200 a day, for that day so that they're not sick at five o'clock in the afternoon, or if they're juggling two or three doctors and basically creating a full-time job out of maintaining their habit, you know, the $103.65 for a 15-day supply is not an awful lot of money. Right. 
it's a ticket to freedom. <clears throat> a ticket yeah, to control. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, I mean, I think that I think the only ticket to freedom is the person. But yeah. this this will this will really help them move in that direction with structure and direction and the physical effect of of uh, significantly decreasing the tolerance. Right. Which means that it's going to get a whole lot cheaper for them to to manage their situation. Yeah, cheaper and emotionally more stabilizing. Um, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So there we have it. Yeah. Um, Taper Aid, T A P E R A I D dot com. I expect that we will end up adding this product to the uh, remarkable recovery dot com where you can find the CBD at the moment that will help you manage your pain. But the Taper Aid will help you manage yeah. your tolerance to or um, dose control of yeah. the opiate, right? Yeah, yeah, and then the the oil would be a, a wonderful adjunct. Absolutely, they work together. Yeah. Do you want to leave a phone number, or is it on your website? Uh, it's on my website, um, taperay.com. Okay. Yeah, but please, uh, uh, I just want everyone to know that I'm 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 old school, and so I'm on the phone. I'm a phone person. And I really, when somebody does take a rate, I really want them to be in touch with me as often as they choose to be in touch with me every day, whether it's texting or calling, so I can help them individualize the protocol. I can receive feedback if they have any questions or any, any answers. Um, I, I really am very proactive in the, in the exchange. Yeah, I can, I myself, with my years of experience as therapist and counselor and all that, I can tell you're you're not a little fly by night shallow pool. Take my money, good day, sir. Yeah, you you come to it with the depth of experience. That's, uh, I mean, all of those guys who wish they could have a father figure in their life would wish for yeah. one. Well, thanks. Like you, if they could have it. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm available. That's wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah. I don't want to stretch it on needlessly because uh, what was important to be said was said. Richie, thank you for being there. Thank you for thanks. having a crazy rich life. Thanks for inviting me. And I uh, hope people will take to this. So okay, this is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast life-enthusiast.com if you want to talk to me i'm at 1-866-543-3388 life enthusiast we are restoring vitality to you and to the planet peace